My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 3,930 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your express consent. Hey everyone, well today we're going to talk about some of the new features in Quebec. Before we get to that, just wanted to note that I am on LinkedIn and if you want to connect with me, I'm more than happy to accept your requests and uh, you know if you need to contact me, that's the best way to do it. Now on to our new features in Quebec. First one that kind of popped out to me and will be most obvious to you is this natural language query builder for lists. So if we go into a list like incident the first thing that you're gonna see that's new is this little speech bubble so it's kind of cool about this is that you can basically type in incidents created yesterday without having to use the filter sorry let me get a space on that hit ask and then it'll filter it for you if you decide you want to add something additional to that um, it'll just keep building on top of that. So we can talk about or put in here um, incidents open by me and hit ask. And then we'll see here in our filter that it adds those conditions. Uh, one thing that's kind of cool about this too is that you have this tips for improving your queries. So I like the way that they approach this and giving you this, uh, this answer key, so to speak, or um, guidance on how to put in uh, the different uh, search values so I like that that's that's a good addition to the platform and moving on next is to create a report with our analytics Q&A so almost the same thing so when we come in to create a new report um, we're gonna see this pop out at us first and again we're gonna have this how can I improve my results it's the same thing I think over there it was called like tips to improve results um, here it's how can I improve, but basically it's the same thing. It gives you those, um, that guidance, right, on how to approach this stuff. So if I'm going to talk about or ask for like incidents assigned to me, I'll use something different. And maybe now I'm going to do it on the incident SLA table because maybe I want, you know, the SLA's fields from task SLA and incident in that database view, right, for reporting. And if you don't know how to create one of these, database sales this one's out of the box but you know, if you had like a custom table you need to add, like combine with task SLA there's a video out there on that too um, that I created not too long ago so if I do incidents aha uh -huh, assigned to me we'll notice here that it captures my recent search which is kind of cool it will throw it in the box uh, it looks like out of the box it doesn't like search already like if I select it but just click ask and then it's gonna throw it in this list report right here for us so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so then moving on to um, the next item, which I thought was pretty awesome, is like we have our value formatting um, in the reporting application. So um, here we're in my personal SLA dashboard, and I have two single score reports. And one thing you're going to notice right off the bat is this K here. And how, you're probably asking the question, how did I get it in there? Well, now we're going to have this value formatting to help us do stuff like this. And I'll show you two different, I just went out there and I said, you know what, what are two things that I show a lot of times on dashboards? One is like average business elapsed time. And I don't, you know, like for me, I talked about this before. I don't care about averages. Averages to me mean nothing because if you only have a very limited um, group for a sample size, then your average can easily get thrown one way or another, right? So. Anyway, getting into this report, when I click on the pencil, we'll see here, when I go to the configure tab, I'm gonna have this aggregation as an average, and then I, foc I go right to business elapsed time. This is uh, the field that I had selected for this table. And which table is it? Incident SLA? Yeah, Incident SLA. And then I hit set value formatting, and now look at all these options we have here, kids. So we'll notice here that the, we can set a maximum duration unit because usually it rounds it up to days and we don't want it to do days. Like if it goes over 24 hours, we don't want to automatically say that's one day. Uh, maybe we just want to do minutes. And then we'll see here we have minute as our minimum duration and we'll see this box right here is grayed out. But if I change it to second, 
There you go. So I'm going to change it back to minute. And then it asks about rounding. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do in here, but I just wanted to point this out and actually set it up for you, or at least an example. So that way you can kind of get an idea of how to set this stuff up. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll go back to that dashboard. Now let's take a look at this one because this K right here, that was kind of cool that they put that in. Gonna hit the pencil here. Again, we're in the configure tab. We have an average going for business elapsed percentage. And now we're gonna see our decimal percentage is one. If, uh, I think out of the box it was two, but I changed it just to one. And you will see here our example pops up. Watch enable abbreviation. See how the example changed? That's where that K is coming from. Um, also another cool thing is that it will show the original number in tooltips if you wanted to or not. You can uncheck that box and then we're going to have this thousand group separator which is uh, basically a comma that it throws in there, right? So if we um, check that box, it'll have the comma in there for every time it goes up to a thousand. So now if I go back to the dashboard and I hover over, take a look down here, see in the tooltip how it shows us 776 days. Um, and the original number, right? Also for that, I don't know, maybe it's the out of the box number, but also below here, we see the same thing. Shows the exact number, right? Cool feature. Next one's UI Builder. Um, I saw a lot of people talking about this on LinkedIn. Um, pretty cool, you type in UI Builder here. Then if you click on this link, it'll bring you into here and then you can create your own experience in the platform. I saw they had a sample out there on the, um, the doc site. I tried to create one on my own without actually using the instructions. And that's one thing that I always do is try to like build it on my own, just guess what the proper responses would be. But I guess I wasn't smart enough on this one or something, but um, they have an example out there for you guys that love doing UI stuff. And you can go in there and create your own experience for your users. So I thought that was kind of cool too. And then I saw they had this new universal request application. Uh, I've been doing uh, some HR onboarding stuff and some other uh, services within the HR application for the past couple of years. So I thought this was kind of cool. And basically what the objective here in a nutshell is if there are other organizations that aren't necessarily HR that need to perform task fulfillment, um, they have this universal request option now. So it's a, there's a plugin and it's paid uh, or you have to pay for it. But I thought this is kind of a cool thing to note too for those of you who are really like HR heavy. And one thing you'll notice here is that like when we go into a record producer, um, after you do the plugin, you're gonna see this universal request config. And then you're gonna see here this like create universal request. Um, and then they have some other option here for request requires additional review. I really haven't gotten too much into it. Um, there's some other stuff for the universal request. Um, also, one thing you'll notice is that there, it has its own app scope right here. Actually, a couple of them, one for the request and then one for reporting. Um, so that's what you'll get when you turn on that plugin. Then next thing moving on, service catalog variables. So I think that like ServiceNow really did us a solid on this one and they did some cool things here. So it's gonna really require a lot less scripting. So we have our hidden read only option. So you're probably already familiar with uh, the mandatory option right here. So now they're gonna have read only and hidden. So if you ever create like hidden variables, I know that I'll do that sometimes if I wanna access like a different app scope and I need to bring in like data when, they, when I'm doing like an on change client script or something. Um, I'll have like a hidden variable that does that. So that's kind of cool they did that. So now I don't have to like cover it up with the UI policy. Um, so they also have the read only option, to, which is cool. Um, I think also another thing too, is that when you check that box, you see how that mandatory is gonna go away. Um, and it, it automatically does that with your UI policies, whether you're aware of it or not. And a lot of people have been trying to figure out for the longest time, like why does it, like when I make something mandatory, why won't it, like let me um, hide it also. So um, it automatically incorporates that business logic in there too. Uh, another cool thing is that like for our variable choices, uh, now we're gonna have, I created two variables here, a checkbox and a choice. So now if we take a look at our checkbox, we're gonna see we have this selection required. So if we check that, again, you know, it's gonna take away our read only and hidden options. 
and it's going to make it a lot easier for us to not have to worry about scripting this stuff out. So if you're going to implement a checkbox, one of them has to be required. All you have to do is check this box. And then for this one right here, you see for our choice, we have this inactive column. So it's becoming more and more like a field now, these variables, which is kind of cool. So I was kind of hoping also for like the permissions that we'd actually be able to like do ACLs on this stuff independent of this permission table. But they're getting closer to making this stuff exactly like the back end. And it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly like it, but I thought for the longest time that they're like, the fields and the variables should behave um, almost the same. And then uh, the last thing I want to talk about is this catalog data lookup. Now this thing is really awesome. So I'm really happy that they finally put this in. Um, if you haven't done data lookups before, basically it's a way to get fields to dynamically change based on other fields. So if we take a look at like one of the, and the one that probably everyone is familiar with out of the box is like a priority lookup what we're saying like impact and urgency um, equal. So here's like our matcher definition, definitions and then we have here the priority which is the output, right? So we're saying impact and urgency when these two change, uh, then it's gonna manipulate the priority. And then here we have our source table and our matcher table. Anyway, you guys probably already know this stuff. But the cool thing is that now you can do it in catalog. So you're gonna click new and then you're gonna see this interceptor that comes up, right? And now you're gonna have catalog data lookup rule. And now here's where we can get our catalog item. All right, so if I put an Aspen universal request, I could pick a matcher table, like maybe one of those DL underscore ones that they have out of the box, um, or even create my own, um, and then kind of go from there, right? And then you can also um, apply it to a variable set, which I thought this is like so awesome. And this has been needed for like the longest time. And this brings us to the end of our video. If you learned something today, go ahead and click like or post a comment. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and click subscribe. My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.